Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about how to write a complex number in the polar form. And as you can see, this one, the real part for this complex number is zero. So this is a pure imaginary number. We have the imaginary part, which is the three, and then we have the i, right? Okay, so um, we are still just going to follow the same process as usual to write the complex number in the rectangular form and convert it to the polar form. Okay, so first we are going to write this as 3i is equal to, okay, so we are going to uh, write that as what, x and then plus y and then the i, okay? And so um, just by comparing, then you can see what x is equal to, what y is equal to. So that will be really easy to figure out. So you can see that x is equal to, in this case, x, well, use the correct color here so x is actually equal to zero right because the real part is zero and then what about the y the y is going to be the y is going to be uh three and actually i don't think we need to include the plus sign right here so i'm just going to put it as so the y can be a negative number in this case okay so we have x equals zero and y equals three um okay so to convert it in the polar form, we actually need two things. We need the R and also we need the angle. So um, let's just recall, let's just recall. Um, to figure out the R, to figure the R, there is a formula that will allow us to do it, which is basically just the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and that is going to be, uh, R is equal to the square root. Okay, so it would be the uh, r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that's quite simple, as you can see here. And then the other one to figure out the angle, there is another formula for that, which is tangent data is equal to y over x. Okay, and um, in order for us to use this formula, we have to just make sure that x is non-zero. If x is zero, then we cannot really use this formula right here, but we can still use the r, okay? So that's the one that we have right here. Okay, so uh, what's next? Next is that we can actually start figuring out the r because we already have the x, we have already have the y, right? So let's try to do that here. And then so we are going to we are going to do what? We are going to get r is equal to so now the square root. Okay. The square root of x square. Okay, so the x square. Um in fact when one of x and y is zero, we don't really have to do any calculation for the r because Basically, it's really just how far this point is away from the origin, right? So if you want to figure out the r, how far is the point 0, 3 away from the origin? It's just three units. So we, we have the r ready, but I'm just showing you. We can still use this formula, but it's unnecessary. Okay, so you can see that 0 squared is 0, and then you get 3 squared, so you get 9, right? So you get square root of 9. And then what do you get here? You get three. So R is equal to three. Okay, so what's next? Next is to try to figure out the angle theta. But the problem is this. Um, we can only use this formula to help us figure out the theta when X is non-zero, but it just happens that we have X is equal to zero right here. So what should we do? Um, the way that we do it is actually even simpler than using the formula, which is to just look at where this complex number is, right, in the complex plane. So what we can do is that we can just, we can just graph this point right here. So let's just draw a complex plane. This is the real axis. And then this vertical axis is the imaginary axis. Now um, we have a point here, which is zero, three, right? If you write it as an order pair, then you can actually write it as what? You have zero and then three. Okay, so just like how you usually just plot a point on the plane, right? So you're just going to put zero, three, which is actually on the uh, vertical axis right here. So it would be one, two, and three. So that's our point. So this is the point that we have here. And that's just this point that we have. 
So that's what zero three. Okay, so now what do you want? Um, we want the angle. And how do we get this angle? The angle is actually simple. Um, what is the angle that's formed by the um, the, uh, the positive horizontal axis? Yeah, so actually, let me just say that it's the view axis and the imaginary axis. So, so the angle between those two would be 90 degrees, as you can see here. Okay, so you can see that that's a 90 degree. So we can actually say that theta is equal to what? Pi over two. So we figure out the theta. Okay, so we got the R, we got the theta. We are ready to write down the polar form of the complex number. So we can write three I, which is the original form, right? So we just copy down that here, which is equal to R times, what is that? That's going to be cosine um, theta plus I times sine of theta here. Okay, so now let's just plug in the numbers. R is equal to what? R is three, so we get the three here. And then we get what? Cosine of theta. Theta is what? Pi over two, so we put the pi over two right here. And then plus I times sine of pi over three. And then basically we have finished. Right? Or you can also write the short form, which is 3 times CIS, and then pi over 2. Right, The C stands for the cosine, the I is the I, and then this, uh, the S stands for the sine. Right, And then you get the pi over 2 here. Yeah. Oh, so I just put it wrong here. That shouldn't be pi over 3, right? That's pi over 2. Yeah. And as you can see, um, you can show that they're equal really easily by just computing the cosine of power over 2 and then the sine of power over 2. Cosine of power over 2 is 0, right? And then sine of power over 2 is 1. So you just get 0 plus 1 times i, which is just i. So you, you're just going to get 3i. Is that okay? So that's it for this problem. To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support and make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching this.